the next piece of uh, uh, the news that we have is uh, uh, IKEA workers, IKEA distribution centers uh, in Illinois have unionized and uh, uh, in Joliet and uh, Min- Minuska, I think, I don't, I'm probably not pronouncing that city's name properly, uh, voted 83 to 76 to unionize their distribution centers. It's pretty good. It's a tight race. Uh, I think that it's good. That's a good thing to, to have, have them unionize, right? They can um, fight for things that they need to fight for. They can fight for better wages. They can fight for better rights as employees. Um, that uh, uh, you know, IKEA might not uh, might might not provide them. I, you know, they they are a corporation. Um, I haven't really heard any any sort of like atrocious employee complaints from IKEA, but I'm sure those distribution center jobs are not um, easy on the body. They they are very physically intensive body uh, uh, work. So if you get injured or uh, have to take time off or so on and so forth, like. You might not get the uh, the choice to do that, um, you know. So the fact that they uh, unionize is is a very good thing. Uh, for the the these guys, the the uh, IAM, IAM is the union that uh, that they unionize with. Uh, have uh, union contracts with four uh, four other uh, states, uh, four uh, other states uh, with IKEA. So let me rephrase that so it makes sense. Uh, they they have union contracts with IKEA and four other states. That's that's the way that's the way that you form sentences, people. Uh, so uh, here's what IKEA said. They said that the choice was solely made with the coworkers, um, and they respect the choice made by the Joliet and Minuska coworkers, and they're going to stand by them. Right, which is good. It's great. You should. I, I, that's great that a corporation is going to stand by them, and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, they they don't try to fuck over the unions. They don't, you know, like IKEA doesn't funnel money into a anti-union fucking candidate in Illinois and the four states to try to pull back on unions. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't happen uh, because uh, you know I I think that this uh, it, this is a big deal. It's a big deal. So. Uh, and really, what it does is it puts it puts pressure on IKEA for, you know, uh, to to push forward on more fair labor practices um, and em- employee treatment. Because, like I said, these job, jobs aren't fucking easy. No way. I I used to do stock when I was um, when I was uh, working at, at at a shoe store, and when I would work at a grocery store, I did stock, and that's it's tough, right? I enjoyed doing it because it got me away from the register. Where it was really slow all the time, um, and uh, and it put and it start, like I was more physically active, uh, which I enjoyed. I enjoyed being a little bit more physically active too. Uh, but I was I was like 17, 18, You know, I think the uh, the uh, when I worked at uh, the shoe store was when I was like 22, 23, You know, so I was still pretty pretty young, and uh, you know, and I wanted to be a little bit more active, so I would kind of, I seeked out that position. But we didn't have a union, and if I hurt myself, and that was one of those things that people kind of like gave me shit for, is they kind of look at me, you know, the skinny, lanky fucking kid, and they're like, oh, uh, there's no union involved. If you hurt yourself and you sue the corporation, then then we're all gonna get screwed. So no, 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 you go and you dust those shoes. And you go you go talk to those ladies and use your charm. And I'm like, Ch- what, have you met me? Uh, I'm gonna discuss Spider-Man details with them uh, and, and uh, discuss the, the, the various different types of Spider-Man that we've seen over the years and, uh, and why the 90s animated series is great. Is that the charm? Is that the charm that you're talking about to sell your fucking shoes? Right, like, uh, but they, yeah, but they would like be hesitant about it because they didn't want they didn't want me to get hurt because they couldn't offer me uh, benefits, and uh, and they also like couldn't afford to have me not on the floor, uh, and uh, and also like pay for a bunch of shit that might you know like or deal with a lawsuit. So, um, IAM works with the Global Labor Federation. 
and the uh, Building and Woodworkers International, and uh, they, they're known for winning bargains, uh, especially at IKEA distribution centers and uh, and fulfillment centers as well. So uh, this was a big win. This was a big win for uh, for, for those workers, and ho hopefully, you know, like they get they get the benefits that they need. They get to take care of themselves, um, and because uh, that's what that's what you need. You know, you. you no matter what job you do you, you need to take care of your body and no matter what job it is they all come with various different types of risks they all come with uh different sort of uh you know physical issues and uh you you, you need to figure out a way uh to take care of yourself uh, and like even this job right like people kind of don't realize uh what kind of goes into into uh, into being a comedian, into be doing these videos and things like that, right? And it's not like like I'm not at a fulfillment center. I'm not going to say that it's the same thing. But there are there are some physical um, issues that come with this because I sit in a car for a long time, then I'm on stage standing on my feet for you know an hour and a half, and then I go hang out with people. So I'm on my feet after a long uh, long couple hours of just sitting. Um, so right now, like I have uh, I have an issue where uh, my hip is actually displaced. <laughs> I'm fucking 31 years old. And my doctor was like, hey, your hips not doing good. You know, you gotta do some fucking stretches. Uh, I'm doing this thing called OMT. Uh, and, uh, and the first appointment I went to, she checked me. She was like, let's check your spine. Uh, and she's like, you kind of have a little bit of a scoliosis. But you're just going to have to live with that forever. And I was like, oh, that's fun. Uh, and she was like, yeah, it won't get worse if you do, like, stretches. And, uh, you know, so that's what I try to do. I've, I've been getting better at them, uh, at, at the regularity of it, right? But it's, like, important. I need to do that, right? I need to take care of myself, especially if I want to continue doing this into my 30s. Driving around the country, going and performing uh, for a few hours every night uh and talking and talking into a camera too like uh that's a throat that happens i have lozenges um i drink you know i've got i keep myself as hydrated as i possibly can um a couple friends have given me some vocal exercises to do which is super helpful uh because i like i have blown my throat out before right after i recorded empathy on sale i blew up my fucking throat and uh and it was it was rough like that was a, a real tough 30 minute set to get through um and then i had to cancel a couple shows which which also fucking sucks when you have to cancel a bunch of shows yeah it's the worst and uh so i've got like vocal exercises that i try to do i try not to talk when i'm not doing these things um in the car you know drinking warm water drinking tea uh, keeping things lubricated and uh, like I said I've got a couple people that have suggested some vocal warm-ups for me um, and I have done those and they do and they do help they do help they kind of strengthen the throat muscles a little bit so you got to take care of yourself right and and with comedy there's no union we don't have like a union for comedy uh, I do think that Ted Alexander a comedian out of New York very funny comedian out of New York Ted Alexander did try to unionize uh, but that was mostly because, like, I think uh, it was a payment issue. Like, uh, certain clubs were not paying comedians proper, properly. Excuse me. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I think he was trying to do that. But if we did, I mean, if we did unionize, like, we could we could legitimately bargain uh, to, f you know, for, for, like, how do we how do we get health insurance for comedians, right? Um, how do we get uh, mental health you know, services for comedians and things of that sort. Uh, maybe it would be crowdfunded, like it would be like a larger crowdfunding uh, type thing if you if you were part of the comedy union. Um, I have to look into that a little bit more because because I do remember him talking about it, and I'm not sure where where that landed. Uh, but right as as far as I know, I don't think there is a union for comedians, um, especially that offers like benefits and uh, bargaining and negotiations and things like that. Um, if there is and you know about it, please uh, leave a comment below and, uh, you know, uh, and let me know. 
Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy, and I'm on tour pretty frequently. You can check out all of my tour dates on my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, in the next week, I will be in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Champaign, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Bloomington, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you're in those cities, go to my website, grab your tickets, come hang out with me. Once again, you can check out all of my tour dates at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll hope to see you on the road.